tunaendelea eh tulianza na sehemu ya kwanza tuka define what is wealth tuka spend a lot of time there na reference point yetu alikuwa ni Ibrahim tukatoka hapo tukaja tukaangalia challenges zetu sisi kama wahamiaji tukasema kwamba tuna changamoto nyingi sana a lot of challenges ambazo wengi wamenaswa hapo wanazichukulia hizo kama excuses za kuwafanya wasipige hatua wasiendelee mbele lakini kumbe tukagundua Mungu pia huwa anazitumia hizi kutujulisha tumetoka how far ambapo ametutoa na ukimweka Mungu in perspective ukimweka Mungu in perspective hizi challenges huwa zinageuka zina opportunities we have seen so many times vitu ambavyo vingine tumevisema hapa ni changamoto hivyo ndio vitu ambavyo they worked for us nakumbuka kuna sehemu nilienda kufanya interview kwa sababu mimi ni mgeni ndio nikapata kazi <laughs> yani kwa sababu mimi nilikuwa mgeni ninaongea na accent niko politically neutral wakaniona mimi ndio wakanipenda kwa hivyo vitu ambavyo watu wengine wanasema ni challenges kwangu mimi vikawa hivyo ndio Mungu amevitumia kuwa the blessing baadaye nikaja nikagundua ah kumbe walinipa kazi kwa sababu nina accent mimi wala sio marekani wala sio gay kama wao wakasema hapa kumbe tulikuwa tunataka mtu ambaye yuko tofauti we wanted diversity kwa hivyo ulivotokezea tena diversity yako inatoka Dar es Salaam kabisa Tanzania ndio tukasema hii ndio tunayoitaka sisi. Kwa hivyo ningejidai mimi Marekani niongee kimarekani na nini nisingepata hiyo kazi. Kwa hivyo Mungu ana uwezo wa kuchukua wewe unaziita challenges changamoto kumbe Mungu ana uwezo wa kuzichukua hizo akazi tweak zika work for you. And that is my prayer. Kwamba things which you call challenges Mungu azitumie hizo zi work on your behalf Bwana asifiwe sana Amen kwa sababu huna makaratasi ndio wakuchukue wewe Wasema huyu ndio tunamtaka kwa sababu hana makaratasi Kuna sehemu tulikuwa tumeenda kwenda ku kuomba finance kama siku sisi tulishuhudia hii wakati fulani finance lengo tulikuwa tunalinunua campus tukatafuta kila benki wakati turn down wale ambao walikuwa wanatuuzia hii campus wakasema tulivyoona nyinyi bank statement yenu ilivyokuwa iko dhaifu haina ubavu <laughs> hamna mbele wala nyuma alafu mnaomba li campus kubwa la milioni mbili ka bank statement kenu kadogo ka dhaifu tukasema nyinyi ndio tuwape maana hakuna benki itakao wapa kwa hivyo tukaamua tuwa finance nyinyi. Kwa hivyo vitu ambavyo wewe unafikiri kwamba they will work against you Mungu ana uwezo wa kufanya hivyo vitu. We work for you. Kwa hivyo wale wakatupa sisi milioni mbili, 2 million dollars ambazo kila benki tulioenda walitukatalia. Kwa sababu walikuwa wakiangalia finances wakasema nyinyi yani don't even think about that. Hawa jamaa wenyewe ndo akasema ah tulivyoangalia tu hivi tukasema nyinyi hakuna lakini maono mlionayo ndio maono ambayo sisi tunayo ya elimu hawa wengine walio apply pamoja na nyinyi ngao wana very strong bank statement lakini they don't share the vision tukapata jamani milioni mbili <laughs> alafu katika ile net worth ambayo tulikuwa tunaongelea tutaongelea kwenye sehemu ya nne hapa lile jengo tumecheki mwaka huu Lime appreciate a hundred times. Sasa hivi liko worth it 4 million dollars. Wakati sisi ni only 2 million dollars ambao tunadaiwa. Kwa hivyo jamani net worth yetu imeongezeka by 2 million dollars. Bwana asifiwe. Unjue mambo ya imani, mnapofanya vitu kwa imani Yaani Mungu huwa anachukua vitu vya kijinga vya kipumbavu which they don't make sense kwa uchumi na principles za kawaida. Mungu huwa anavichukua hivyo, halafu anavibadilisha na vifanya vi work on your behalf. 
What you need to do, very simple. Just trust God. Tizami kumbo usifau, usifate principle na kanuni za kiuchumi. Lakini imani lazima iwe na sehemu yake. La sivu, hutaona mungu anavofanya mambo ya ajamu kwenye maisha yako. Lazima wa ufike kwenye sehemu, useme kwamba sasa hapa, huu mlima siwezi kupanda akili zangu zinakwama kila kitu ni kinakwama na hitaji Mungu utakapofika that step Mungu anafurahi anasema now I'll show you kwamba mimi ni Mungu all the time God does that anakuleta kwenye sehemu ambako you will appreciate that you are a human being and he is God alafu anakuinua anakupanda anafanya kitu ambacho wewe utaenda kila mahali utashuhudia kwamba hiki sikukifanya mimi alikifanya Mungu sio kwamba i am so good in financial management sio kwamba i am so good in this i'm so good in that that's why i got this utasema tu jamani mimi akili zangu zote na nguvu yangu ya kiuchumi yote ilishia hapa Mungu ndo anaanzia hapo kwa hivyo lazima kuwe kuna some aspect ya kupiga imani into the unknown or risk taking bwana spirit part 3 tunaenda kuongelea tunaenda kuongelea kuhusu destination where do we want to go what is the ideal situation tumeongelea what is wealth tumeongelea our current situation kama wageni we are disadvantaged naomba tupige hatua nyingine moja at least let us generate a vision the essence of of part 3 ni ku generate the vision of where do we want to be to draw a sketch map of a promised land ili kwamba tutakapoanza kwenda tuwe tunajua tunaenda wapi God took time in the book of Exodus in the book of Deuteronomy kuambia wana wa Israeli na the book of Joshua ku paint ile picha ya nchi ya hadi ikoje Kwa hivyo wale walivyokuwa wanapita jangwani kila siku walivyokuwa wanatembea kila siku mpaka yani wanapoteza uelekeo at the back of their mind they knew exactly where they are going hakuna kitu kibaya kama kilichotupata sisi asubuhi ya leo tuko na Dorothy tunakuja hapa tulipoteza nini tukaweka address ya hapa kwenye GPS kumbe huko Dayton sijui wapi kuna another East uh, 35 East Staton Avenue ile ikatuambia tuna 45 minutes to drive tukaanza kukata mbuga tunaenda huko si Springfield si wapi tumepiga kama dakika 30 huko tunakwenda kisha tukasema i think we are going a wrong direction this is not where mbona huko porini tunaona mashamba tu ya mahindi hao jamaa wana kanisa huko mbali huko porini huko <laughs> baadaye ndio tukaja tukaweka weka ile vizuri ndio tukapata the right destination and what happened what happened was tulipo we reset ile ikatuambia make a u turn we had to obey tukafanya a u turn and it took us like minutes or so to be here many times in our lives to na lose the destination kuna sababu nyingi sana zingine ni technical zingine ni personal kuna so many reasons why we lose vision and focus of where we are going kama sasa mtani rusu let us discuss let's go back again on the mode of discussion and interaction tuongelee kuhusu our destination where exactly do we want to be tunazungumzia wealth na tunazungumzia blessings okay Naomba mnikumbushe tulisema what's the definition what is the definition of baraka mstari wetu wa msingi 
Tulisema mstari wetu wa msingi ni mwanzo 12 mstari wa pili na watatu ambao Mungu alimwambia Abraham kwamba nitakubariki halafu na we utafanyika kuwa baraka. Naomba niongeze tena na mstari mwingine. Tuwe na mistari hii miwili. Sehemu ya tatu mstari wetu hapa wa msingi ni Zaburi sura ya pili na mstari wa nane. Zaburi sura ya pili na mstari wa nane. Tunaongelea baraka hapo. Naomba mtu ambaye amepata asome kwa nguvu kabisa kwa Kiswahili. Zaburi mbili na mstari wa nane. Amen. Niombe nami nitakupa mataifa kuwa urithi wako na misho ya dunia kuwa milki yako. Uombe nami nitakupa mataifa kuwa nini? urithi wako ask of me and i will give you nations for your inheritance unaona sasa hapo maombi yanaanza kubadilika now hatuombi sasa viombi maombi vidogo vidogo vya panzi unjue maombi ya panzi ni yale maombi ya nibariki naomba chakula naomba renti nilipie mungu gari tule tumaombi tudogo tudogo sasa tunaanza kubadilika tumesema kwamba Mungu atakubariki kwanza you will be blessed what was the definition here and then you become a blessing hapa tulisema it is you and your family and here tunaongelea familia za dunia nations zinafanyika kuwa baraka kwa kupitia wewe sasa <laughs> tumesema tumesema ukiangalia hapa it's a major major challenge Mungu anatupa changamoto kubwa anasema utaniomba nami nitakupa mataifa kwa hivyo kuna condition kwanza na maana sisi ndio tunafanya nini tunaomba what if we don't pray nations won't be your inheritance yani tutakuwa tumebarikiwa hapa tutakuwa tuko hapa tumesema zile baraka za kwanza Mungu anatubariki sisi na watoto wetu all our needs and wants tunakutana nazo. Lakini hiyo ni hatua tu ya kwanza tulisema sisi ni bomba na sio kisima. Ndio tulivyokubaliana pale kwenye introduction. Mungu anataka akishatubariki hapa sisi tunabariki mataifa na in the process ya kubariki mataifa na sisi pia tunabarikiwa kwa hivyo vision inakuwa iko hapo hapa ni just a process ama ni njia tu lakini hasa Mungu huwa analenga mataifa sisi ni just God's method of blessing the nations Mungu kianza kufuatilia ile baraka ya Abraham ambao watu wengi wanaiongelea naomba tusiende deep into that. Baraka hasa ya Abraham Mungu alikuwa anataka kubariki mataifa ikabidi atafute mtu. Ndio akampata Ibrahim. Ibrahim akawa echo ya kubariki mataifa. Na sisi Ibrahim ndio baba yetu. Si ndio hivyo jamani? Ibrahim ndio baba yetu. Kwa hivyo the way God is going to deal with us we can learn from how God dealt with Abraham. 
Sasa naomba tuanze ku stretch akili zetu. Tuanze ku stretch our mindset. Ukiona watu wanalamika sana hapa. Yaani ukiona mtu yuko so concerned hapa. Yaani akili yake yote na mazungumzo yake yote na hofu zake zote ziko hapa. Hajakaa bado mkao wa Mungu kumtumia hapa. Bado. Yaani wewe unalalamika tulisema mtu anakuta analalamika sadaka mbili ametoa, mtu analalamika kitu kidogo, yani akili yake yote iko so much absorbed, anakuwa more tulisema kuna two things, kuna kuwa antro or egocentric and kuna kuwa theocentric. Ukiona mtu bado anawaza yeye tu mimi na chakula changu na ugali wangu na watoto wangu na mahali pangu pa kulala kila kitu bado anawaza yeye he's not ready bado huyu mtu hajawa tayari Mungu kumtumia ku make a difference and we really really need to position ourselves yani ni sisi ndio tunakaa mkao wa kwamba Mungu nibariki ili niwe na Mungu wanasema waislamu wanazaje Mungu sio? Asumani. Mungu hana upendeleo na anasikia maombi. Uki atakujaribisha tu atakujaribisha kidogo we utapata bonus ya elfu moja. Halafu anakuangalia, yani ulikuwa uitegemei, you didn't know anything about it, halafu unashtukizwa tu. Unapata let's say 1000 bucks or 5000 dollars over and above what you're expecting. Halafu Mungu anakaa na kuangalia. Si ulikuwa naomba wewe ufanyike kuwa baraka. Sasa Mungu anaanza kwanza na kubariki kidogo tu aone how much is your mindset. Hiyo 5000 utachanganyikiwa. <laughs> Kuna kuna methali moja ya Kiswahili sitaki niseme lakini mbaya sana mbaya sana <laughs> inasema Kiswahili so Kiswahili inasema maskini akipata <laughs> eh yani Kiswahili akipata bwana mimi mzima utajua kapata yule bwana yule ile tax return imerudi utajua kwanza unaenda kuangalia kwenye facebook page yake utaona imebadilika <laughs> utajua tu hapa sasa kuna mambo anavujigamba kumbe Mungu anafanya nini anataka angalie are you gonna become a blessing What's your mindset? Mtu mmoja alisema hivi, the way you deal with your 5000 dollars. The way you deal and you spend your 5000 dollars. That's exactly how you're gonna spend your 5 million dollars. Exactly the same. The way you spend your $1000 is exactly the same way you're going to spend your 1 million dollars exactly the same it's a mindset it's your philosophy what's your philosophy tunaziba baraka za mungu kwenye maisha yetu because of how we relate with our $1000 which God gives us God blesses us in order to become a blessing to other people Kwa hivyo chochote tulikuwa tuna discuss na mke wangu siku moja akaniuliza hivi Mungu akikupa wewe milioni tano leo utafanyia nini I had to slow down and start scratching my head. Eh? Yaani unaanza kwa kweli hivi kweli Mungu akifungua mlango 
Bill Gates aje ofisini kwa kwamba akuandikie email ama akuite wewe uende Seattle akwambie nakupa 10 million dollars tomorrow iko kwenye account yako what are you going to do with it i want to promise you i know exactly how you're going to do with it should i tell you how did you use your salary salary uliyopata mwezi huu umeitumiaje that's exactly how you're going to use your 10 million dollars exactly the same kama ulitoa fungu la kumi, ile milioni tano utatoa fungu la kumi. kama ulitoa offering ile milioni tano na nyota toa offering kama uliinvest ile milioni tano na nyota invest kama ulifanya savings hiyo milioni tano unafanya savings kama kuna watu ulisaidia hiyo milioni tano kuna watu utasaidia kama ulifanya ulinunua vitu vya ovyo ovyo tu hapo mtaani ukapita mall ukanunua nunua tu hiyo milioni tano you will do exactly the same it's a question of discipline it's a question of discipline how are we disciplined ndio ile mindset ya watu maskini kwenye kile kitabu tulikuwa tunaongelea na mindset ya watu ambao they are wealthy mindset ya watu maskini ni spend 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 until you finish unatumia tu unatumia tu unatumia tu unatumia tu unatumia tu unatumia tu Hawana ile discipline ya kufanya ile hela ifanye nini izae ifanye kazi on their behalf no 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 yeye anafikiri atakuwa na nguvu tu forever atafanya tu kazi forever no kuna wakati your energy biologically your energy will go down hutaweza wewe kupiga mzigo dabo unazozifanya leo hutaweza wewe in the next 15 years utakuwa ukilala hata kuamka huwezi umechoka mwili unakataa mwili unakwambia no 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 this is my time to rest not to work mbona mnanionea huruma <laughs> mnaniangalia alafu mnanionea huruma <laughs> Are we going together? Yes. Daktari, niko kwenye mstari. Yeah. <laughs> yule ndo ana control kule nyuma. Eh? Akiona anatoka kwenye mstari anazima yule nani. <laughs> Kwa hivyo watu wa Mungu ninaomba hapa to spend a little time tueleze kidogo hapo. Si tulishasema ile definition yetu. Naomba tuirudie tena ile definition. Halafu tuone mambo yanakwendaje. Utajua tu ya tu sio mwalimu maana kimeninunulia maka ambazo ziko ziko permanent. <laughs> Mzee, next time nanunua zile self nani zile maka ambazo ndio utajua tu jamani engineer huyo. <laughs> Asante asante bwana kwa kunileta kune na ubao pia. I'm so glad. Eno ule ule ah wale karatasi. I know it I'm good. I'm good. Na na upenda huu mkubwa. At least wale ambao macho yao ni kama ya kwetu sio wengine. Tunaweza tukaona vizuri. Katika definition yetu ya to become a blessing or to be blessed tulisema namba moja spiritual is that right number two, emotionally number three, physically and healthy wise socially and then tukasema financially and economically kuna kingine chochote tumekiacha hapo mentally si ndio iko na emotion eh samu ya pale tukirudi kwenye de, na in a sustainable way is that right yes. tulisema tulisema in a sustainable way kwamba Mungu sasa anatubariki spiritually 
We have a right relationship with him. That's very important. And we say that should be number one. Katika mchakato mzima wa Mungu kutubariki. Kwanza kabisa ile kumjua tu yeye ni baraka namba moja. Ile the fact kwamba you know God, so many people so many people hizi zote hawana kwa sababu ile haijakaa sawa sawa. Hawamjui Mungu. Kumjua Mungu ndio the ndio source of all other things. Kama umjui Mungu, Yesu alisema itakufaidia nini? Kipewa dunia nzima iwe yako. Lakini unapoteza roho yako milele motoni. It will not benefit you anything. Kwa hivyo the number one blessings which we get is a right relationship with God. Na ukiwa unamjua Mungu kuna amani ambayo hiyo amani ikiwepo moyoni mwako everything else makes sense. Yaani ukiwa na Mungu rohoni hivi vingine vyote vinakaa in a right perspective is the right foundation. Yesu alitoa ule uh, ilikuwa ni parable akasema kulikuwa na mtu mjinga na kulikuwa na mwerevu mmoja akajenga nyumba yake kwenye mchanga nyingine akajenga mwingine akajenga nyumba yake kwenye mwamba storms zilivyokuja yule aliyejenga kwenye mchanga ile nyumba ilifanya nini that is exactly here yani spiritual our right relationship with god becomes a foundation everything else rests on our relationship with God. Kwa sababu haitakumana hata ukitoa maelfu ya pesa. Halafu wewe roho yako iwe inaangamia. It won't help you. Halafu utakaposimama mbele ya kiti cha enzi cha Mungu, mwambie Mungu. Kwa nini nisiingie mbinguni mimi nilisaidia maskini milioni tano Mungu atakwambia asante sana. Nilikubariki huko duniani lakini ufalme huko mbinguni hauna. So sad. Kwa hivyo if we put the right thing in place, our relationship with God becomes becomes very central. And then sasa ndio inakuja emotionally Mungu anatubariki we become emotionally stable tumesema mara nyingi watu ambao ambao they are emotionally not stable you can tell the way it is difficult to relate with them mm <laughs> naomba nisirudi chana kule tulishapita huko physically haitatusaidia kitu kama Mungu anatubariki na kila kitu lakini hatuna afya tuko hospitali we won't even have time to enjoy the blessings of god and partly not 100% but partly our physical health we are responsible for our health thank you for that one mara nyingi tuna blame mungu wakati we are not responsible with what we eat how we eat we don't exercise we don't do anything in order to make us the blessings abraham alishi miaka mingapi wapendo mchungaji unakumbuka wewe mwenzangu lakini abraham alikaa miaka mingi mpaka alimuona nani huyu mjukuu wake abraham mtoto wake alikuwa isaia is that right isaac 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 watoto wake walikuwa ni jacob na kuna mtu alikuwa anatufundisha akasema huyu Abraham he lived long enough to see his grandchildren. Sasa sijui miaka ni mingapi lakini wale wenye kugugo mnaweza mkagugo hapo chap chap mkatuambia but this person lived long. Hakuishi miaka michache bwana. Kiangalia kina Joshua, Joshua aliishi miaka mingi mpaka akaona the promise of God. Ukiangalia okay, Caleb, Caleb lived long enough to see the blessings of God. Unaweza ukaomba baraka, ukaomba baraka, ukaomba na kweli Mungu akakubariki lakini life yako ikawa short circuited kwa sababu you are not healthy, you will not see 
the blessings and your prayers being answered. It is quite a satisfaction to see God answering your prayers. Kuona kwa macho yako. Yule Simon alisemaje alivyompokea Yesu alipokuwa katoto kadogo. Akasema sasa macho yangu yame Ona, unaweza sasa ukafanya nini ukamchukua mtumishi wako. That's the essence of longevity. Ya kuishi muda mrefu. We are partly responsible for that. Now, I am sorry to say sisi wa Africa we don't really take good care of our health. Kabisa kabisa yani sisi hatu hiyo hiyo ni tunamwachia Mungu. <laughs> tunamwachia afya hiyo uh, ni mapenzi ya Mungu. Tunikiumwa ni mapenzi ya Mungu. Jamani tuamke. <laughs> ama kule mdani nyima chakula <laughs> eh nichungulie tena kule eh naomba dorothy niwekee changu alafu huko niendelee kusema sema sana maana ngaweza kusema sema sana alafu dada manka akakupiga chini akakwambia chakula kimeshaisha hapo <laughs> wana sifiwe we are being blessed by god umesema miaka mingapi miaka 75 a hundred one seventy five years that was abraham's life kwa hivyo akaona wajukuu naona na labda aliona na vitukuu vyake i'm not sure lakini he lived long to see the promise of god kwa hivyo naomba tu tu emphasize kwamba jamani tusisahau sana afya zetu ni vizuri kwanza ku take good care of our health not only to look good but also to live long mwana asifiwe sana socially hapa sasa ndio tulisema kwamba Mungu anatubariki sisi na pia na watoto wetu na familia zetu na mahusiano yetu na watu wengine hapa naomba ni spend time sana but I am very strong here kwa sababu tulisema your social status so many times is determined also by your economic position Sasa wewe unasema hicho utatuambia utatuambia wewe wanakuangalia wewe una nini kwanza Si ndio Tanzania wanasema hivyo Wewe unatuambia kwa ni we nani Una nini kwanza wewe Sunaona so, watu walivyo na madharao eh? <laughs> Sasa inakupa hasira inabidi urudi huku kafanye vitu ili utakapokuja kusema wewe una nini na wewe una unaanguka unaweza kwamba wewe una nini kwanza wewe <laughs> Kuna mtu mmoja alikuwa anahubiri naona ni masanja mkandamizaji nilicheka sana siku moja ana ile injili very confrontational <laughs> Alikuwa yuko pale sijui career course sijui wapi alafu anasema mimi na Land Cruiser na Rivex na nyumba na biashara wewe huna kitu umeshika mchuma kwenye daladala alafu unanicheka what do you have to give you the right ya kunidharau kwa sababu mimi naongelea wokovu what do you have Unaona mambo hayo sasa that's the position God wants to put us kwamba sometimes you don't say anything lakini ile resume yako your cv speaks for you and when you speak one word everybody listens because you are accomplished si tuliongea wakati ule celebrities command respect because we celebrate their success ndio maana tunawaita celebrities na marekani wajinga kweli Mtu kaenda kashinda huko kukata mauno anakuja huko anatushauri sisi kuhusu economy. Wewe tangu lini ni celebrity wa kukata viuno kule anatushauri sisi kuhusu mambo ya politics na kila mtu anamsikiliza. Kwa nini? They are accomplished there. They can transform it here and they can tell you what to do. Na unakaa kimya tu maana kiongea. Unaangalia net worth yake ni 300 million dollars. Wewe hata ukisema unampinga, wewe una madeni tu, una kitu chochote. <laughs> Unaona sasa mambo yanavyokuwa hayo. 
Yani sasa we don't have control over that. That's how the society in a dictate the terms. Inabidi sasa jamani wapendwa tubadilishe gear. Eh? Tunaweka na sisi sasa gear kubwa kabisa kabisa. Ili kwamba when we speak Eh? Mtu akakuuliza una nini na wewe unauliza wewe kwanza tuanze na wewe wewe una nini? Akileta resume yake na wewe ukiweka ya kwako hapa anapiga saluti anasema basi I think I need to listen to you. Unaambia now sit down and listen because we know what we are talking about. Tumeshapita eh? Tumepita zile ngazi zile. Mungu amefanya nini? Ameshaturusha, ametutoa huku chini. We know where we come from. And we can speak over your life. Why? Kwa sababu Mungu ametutoa huku. Sasa tuko hapo we can speak. Si miraha jamani kuwa kwenye hiyo position. Amen. Wewe mnaniangalia hata mshangilii jamani. <laughs> eh? Mchungaji, hao watu hata washangilii bwana. Mchungaji anasema eti tuna negative network. <laughs> atatutoa Mimi naamini kabisa Mungu anafanya nini? Anatutoa kule kwenye negative net worth. Halafu few years tutakaa hapa hapa, tutakuwa tunakula nyama hapa. Halafu tutakuwa tunasikia mambo makubwa ambayo Mungu amefanya katikati yenu. I believe so strong with my heart here. Mtatuita hapo tuje tule nyama. Hapo kuna salad wala kuna nini tunachoma nyama tu daktari nyama tu hapa halafu tunasikia mashuhuda ya manetworth mamilioni tunataka kusikia watu wananunua apartment buildings tunataka kusikia watu wananunua hospitali nursing homes tunataka kusikia vitu vikubwa malls wa Tanzania tunanunua mall tunajenga malls Eti mchungaji anataka kujenga kanisa unaambia usihangaike kuchangisha watu bwana eh unahangaika kuchangisha watu nini nipe budget shilingi ngapi ah milioni mbili tu hizo tu basi njoo kesho vizini unamwandikia cheki ya milioni mbili mchungaji anajenga kanisa i mean those are the kinds of halafu kushuhudia mtu kuja kwa Yesu haiwi shida utoi jasho Kuna nini utoke jasho kuambia mtu habari za Yesu wakati anaona maisha yako yanashuhudia Yesu anavyofanya vitu vikubwa anajua jamaa alikuja hapa ana begi tu halafu huyu jamaa hata ukiangalia alivyokuja hapa pa kufikia alikuwa hao na huyu jamaa tumempokea sisi huyu Eh hey, lakini sasa alikuja na Yesu pia kwenye hiyo sanduku lisahau Kwenye sanduku alikuwa na nani Alikuwa na Yesu Mtu ukimwangalia kwa nje unamwona amepigika ameisha kabisa. Anakuja wale waliotoka kwenye dhiki kuu. Ndio ndio anasema, "Hao ndio waliotoka katika ile dhiki kuu." Jamaa unakuta ametua hapo New York amepigwa baridi kweli kweli. Unamwambia njoo na nguo za baridi haelewi, anabidi anaga koti kalaini laini tu. Amepigwa baridi kweli kweli. Lakini mambo ya Mungu yalivyo. Mungu anachukua mtu kutoka hatua mpaka hatua mpaka hatua mpaka hatua baadaye huyu mtu akija kusimama unamshangaa. We are work in progress. Mungu hajabadilia jamaliza bado kazi na wewe. Usijikatie tamaa. Sometimes we give up too quickly tunaacha tunakata tamaa mapema we give up our dreams we give up the destinations tunasema you know what nilikuja hapa nilikuwa sielewi system inafanyaje kazi kinafanyaje kazi nilikuwa sielewi sasa nimeelewa bwana inabidi tukuchakarika bwana inabidi tu sasa nikupiga tu dabo una lose your dream yani tunapoteza maono yetu na ndoto ambazo Mungu alikuwa amekupa kabla hujaje hapa ili utakapokanyaga hapa una land while running 
lakini tukihiti reality tuna give up our dream hakuna mtu mgumu kama mtu aliyepoteza hope hata wagonjwa wa oh, madaktari wanatuambia mgonjwa anayekufa haraka sana ni yule ambaye amekata tamaa ya maisha hataki kuendelea kungangania na kupigana hataki ana give up huyo ni mgonjwa mbaya sana hata ukimpa dawa moyoni ameshakata tamaa na ndio wengi tuko hivyo moyoni system ya marekani tumeshaisema kwamba it is impossible hapa mwana mpaka uzaliwe na silver na silver spoon ama gold spoon domoni ningekuwa mimi niko hivi ndio labda lakini unakuta tumeshakata tamaa kabisa mimi nitaisha kwa CNA tu basi nantosha nikipata chakula changu mimi na watoto wangu nilipe rent itanifaa itanitosha unamshukuru Mungu bora bora kidogo na amani <laughs> si ndio maandiko yanavyosema bora tu chakula kidogo cha wali na dengu kwenye kona ya nyumba kule eh? aa hizo scripture unajisingizia tu sio zako Mungu anataka tuwe influential financially economically na hata mentally tuwe stable mental stability tuliongea mfano tukasema mtu milionea lakini bipolar i mean tukasema inakuwa inakuwa very weird combination very weird combination there are people who are wealthy lakini mentally they don't think right ndio unaona wanapanda kwenye helicopter na mwaga hela huko chini ama anafanya mtu party ukiangalia bili ya ile party ama wedding inakuwa ni milioni sijui ngapi unakaa pale kwenye tv unasema sisi huko Afrika watu wanakufa na njaa kila siku jamaa na choma milioni sijui tano kwa siku moja eh hey, kazi tafuta bwana amecheza basketball mwenyewe kazi pata zake wewe tafuta zako wasaidie watu wako kama una uchungu sana we usiona uchungu na hela ya mtu wewe na uchungu na hela yako wewe itafute yako ndio wewe na uchungu nayo yeye anabani hela nayo ya kutumia <laughs> yani unakuta mpendwa anaangalia hivi tv analaani tu hela hii ingesaidia wasalamu wangapi hela hela hii watu Afrika hawana viatu hela hii watoto hawana madawati hela tafuta yako <laughs> upeleke huko Afrika Lasivo nobody will take care of your people it's you Now the long as long as we continue with a vicious circle tunakaa kwenye ile mdwara lile la umaskini tutakuwa tunapiga manyungu tu na hakuna watu wabaya wa manyungu kama watu maskini wewe usinunue viatu vipya utaona atakusema na viatu vyako vyako tena afano kusema Yaani shida kweli yani umaskini ni dhambi sijui dhambi gani sijui dhambi sijui ni roho i don't know lakini tuna shida kweli Mungu atufanye nini atuponye atoe huko Mchungaji hakuna kitu kigumu kama kuchunga kanisa la watu maskini Mimi nakwambia mimi sio mchungaji Yaani kazi kweli kweli na mimi ujiandae utafute na kazi nyingine mbili Hao bwana wao ukiwahubiri watakusema tutamkomesha Hawatoi fungu la Mjungaji mjungaji Wewe tu wangonge gonge kidogo Wewe unakubaliana unapigana tu simu eh tumnyoshe ulisikia ujumbe wa Ijumaa Ulimsikia alimwongea sasa tumuonyeshe hapa nani ana power. Eh? Yaani watu maskini sisi tuna shida. Hata kiroho chetu kinakuwa kiko hivyo hivyo tu. Cha ovyo ovyo tu. Mungu atusaidie. Tunafanikiwa rohoni na mwilini pia. Usije mkanitoa kwenye Facebook alafu atoka. <laughs> Utoe nzima nzima sio unatoa ka clip tu Wote ni fata na Carolina Mimi nitaambia angalieni nzima nzima 
<laughs> well, it's spirit. Poverty is a mentality. Ujue mtu anaweza akawa hana. Lakini moyoni mwake is wealthy. It's very possible. Wewe hujawahi kwenda ukakutana na mtu ana vitu vingi sana lakini moyo wake is wealthy. Kwanza ana malalamishi. Halafu the way anavyo relate na vitu yuko so liberal and free. Na hata kupat. Ukiangalia yule mwanamke aliyokuwa anatoa pesa kwenye treasury. Yesu akasimama pale watu wakaja wakatoa maela makubwa makubwa yule mwanamke akatoa senti ilikuwa senti moja senti mbili akatoa vile hivi senti yake viwili Yesu akasema huyu ametoa zaidi ya wengine hao wote because she gave her heart she gave portion of her life more wealthy katika macho ya Mungu ni moyo ile attitude your mindset hata kama utatoa dola mbili tu pale kwenye kikapu cha sadaka hizo ndizo Mungu alizokubariki nazo na ukazitoa kwa moyo wako wa kumshukuru Mungu Yu, Mungu anatafanya vitu vikubwa sana na hiyo dola mbili kuliko dola laki mbili ambayo inakuja na masimango sasa mimi natoa hii lakini mchungaji lazima pale tuhame lazima mchungaji lazima tufanye hivi hapa lazima yani na condition so much Mbaka unatamani kumwambia you know what take back your money. <laughs> Niache mimi na amani yangu. Ndio hawa watu ambao hawajakombolewa hapa. They're not yet a blessing because now wanashindwa kufanyika nini? Kufanyika kwa baraka sasa. Sasa naomba to move very quickly here. Hapa tulikuwa tunazungumzia tu wewe na familia yako na mkate wako wa kila siku. Usingoje kuna mtu mmoja alisema anangoja Mungu anibariki sana. Alafu nikishabarikiwa ndio na mimi nianze kubariki wengine. Kumbuka wewe ni bo, bomba. Sio kisima. Ukisubiri mpaka ubarikiwe sana, alafu ndio na wewe uanze kubariki, utakuja ku realize umebarikiwa sana na miaka 95. Una 95 years ndio unaanza kubariki wengine only for one year and a half. Alafu tunakubariki gaburini na wewe tunakuja kuja <laughs> ni afadhali uone wengine wanavobarikiwa through you kuliko uwe umelala huko halafu you don't even enjoy to see others being blessed through you sasa to switch gears to switch gears hapo tutaulizana maswali baadaye kidogo najua hapo it's a nice place for discussion tuzungumzie kwenye baraka ya mataifa Hapa najua itakuwa ni over syllabus to most of us. Lakini tuongee tu. Hapo nasema je Dorothy? Yeah, I think we should because I believe in a time like this we need to be able to attract watu ambao wanataleta impact katika maisha ya watu. Na it's a mindset. That's true. Ina answer na mindset kwa sababu mm Amen. Kwa hivyo it is worth it to discuss here. Number one here kabla sijasahau neno kubwa kabisa ni impact. Na lingine ambalo linakuja kichwani ni influence. impact influence kitu gani tena kingine tunapoongelea 
nation's impression Solutions Na hizi sio problems ndogo ndogo tunazungumzia solutions ambazo ni multi cultural na cultural na pia ni multi nations multinational Sasa mara nyingi sana tunapojiangalia huwa tunasema mimi ni nani hata kuweza kufanya nini kuwa na impact ambayo kufanya kitu ambacho kita impact the entire nation ama the whole country ama the whole people. Kwa hivyo yani tunajiweka kwenye very small position na ukikaa na kama tulivyosema kama mindset yako haijakaa kwa wewe ku mataifa. You will never have influence across borders. Na naomba hapo ni slow down ni seme Watanzania wachache sana ambao wewe na mimi tunawafahamu wana influence across nations. You will tell me you will give me the names. Very very few. Lakini watu wa nchi zingine kila siku tunawaona wako kwenye news. Kila siku tunawaona katika influencers of the world people ambao wana impact sisi hatujaandaliwa kwa ajili ya kuchukua leadership ya mataifa hatujafundishwa nyumbani na hatujafundishwa shuleni kwamba Mungu anatuita tuwe viongozi sio tu like small community to become leaders of nations wenzetu wanaandaliwa tangu wadogo na wanawafundisha watoto wao zinapotokea nafasi za uongozi wa shule watoto wao wanafanya nini wanaenda kugombea kuwa president of the school sisi watoto wetu tunawafundisha kuwa kondoo kuwa good followers kuwa loyalists utafukuzwa kazi wewe ukiwa unafanya namna hii ndivyo vitu tunavyoambia watoto wetu Hakuna employer atakayeweza ku stand your attitude. Utafukuzwa kazi wewe. We are preparing them to become followers and not leaders. Ukiangalia position ya nchi yetu na siasa zetu haziandai wa Tanzania kuchukua an international platform. That is a big mistake we are doing and we need to start thinking differently. Kwa sababu Mungu anaweza kukuweka kwenye position ya kuinfluence the globe lakini mindset yetu iko kwenye kuinfluence only the country. Ndio maana kuna vitu viko very powerful Tanzania lakini havijulikani duniani viko Tanzania tu. Kuna biashara very nice in Tanzania well organized they can be replicated outside the borders nobody thinks about it very few people few people take that international market by the horns and say kwamba tuta replicate Tanzania tutafanya Kenya tutafanya Zimbabwe South Africa tutawafuata China huko huko tutaenda kuwafanyia biashara huko nobody thinks that way what is our thinking bring it here in Tanzania wewe unachua huko Marekani kilete hapa Tanzania kwa nini ukilete hapa tunapokea tu sisi tuna attitude ya nini ya kupokea tu hakuna ambaye anawaza 
kuchukua mlima tu wa Tanzania ule mlima wa Kilimanjaro nyuzi hapa ndio dunia imeanza kujua kwamba uko wapi uko Tanzania miaka yote kila mtu aliyokuwa anaongea naye alikuwa anasema mlima uko wapi inaonyesha jinsi gani ambavyo we were not prepared to take an international platform we were not prepared hakuna hata mtu boldly ambaye angesimama kwenye bibi wa mini ya BBC ama CNN aseme aseme kwamba mlima Tanzania jamani i want to put geography right mlima Tanzania mlima Kilimanjaro uko Tanzania hauko Kenya teach your children the right geography hakuna mtu yuko tayari kusema hivyo anasema kwanza wakisikia accent yangu watanisikiaje watanionaje kwanza it's a practice mwezi mzima kabla sijaenda kwenye CNN au <laughs> sio daktari yani hapo tutaji, tutajipiga mswaki kweli kweli kabla tujaenda huko tuna hofu ya ajabu sana yani hatujaandaliwa kuteka the international platform tuna hofu hata tuni tunaogopa nini Ndiyo tunasema kwamba kivuli chetu wenyewe tunakikimbia. Sema shao na mtoto anaangalia kivuli, anakimbia. That's exactly how we are. And that is what we tell our children. We are raising our children in fear. Akitaka watoto wetu akitaka kuchukua nafasi makubwa makubwa, tunawazuia kwa sababu sisi wenyewe tunafikiri kama kuku. Sasa watoto wetu wenyewe wanazaliwa kwenye hiki kizazi hawa jamani eagles hawa marekani wana fly so high they call themselves the leaders of the world america is the world to them wanasema this guy is the best in the entire world that's their language wakati hata hiyo county hajawahi kutoka ameshindana nieleka hapo ameshinda kwenye county anasema he is the best in the whole world wewe hata state tu hujafika unasema world unaijua wewe dunia ikoje but it is the mindset sasa jamani Mungu atusaidie tuanze kuwa na ile mindset of taking the world for inheritance and it is reflected in our prayers what kind of prayers do we pray Mungu nibariki mimi na watoto wangu mimi, viatu, mimi, chakula, mimi gari, Mungu mimi. Yaani it is so much us, so much us. Bado tuko hapa like babies. Paul says when I was a baby, I talked like a baby. I prayed like a baby. Everything I did was like a baby. But now I am grown up. I need to talk like a grown up person. I need to pray like a grown up person. I need to act like a grown up person. Think outside the borders of your country. Think big. Siani hizi borders za nchi zisikumbabaishe. Mungu anapokupa vision uhangali borders. Yaani naomba hiyo irekodi kabisa kabisa. When God gives you a vision He does not look at the borders. He does not look at nationalities. Mungu anapokupa vision inapitiliza. It is global. Kama sio global, hiyo vision ni ya kwako wewe tu, sio ya Mungu. Sio. Ya Mungu ina traverse everything. It's a big. Waangalie kila mahali Mungu alipoongea na watu anawapa vision in the Bible. Everybody God was talking about nations and he was talking about international. Hata mission yenyewe ya Yesu ilikuwa international. Huyo Abraham tumesoma it was international. Ukisoma Yeremia Mungu anasema wewe nitakuita utafikia mataifa. Everybody in the Bible alikuwa na encounter na Mungu. Vision Mungu anayokupa is what? International. Na ipokee hivyo hivyo ilivyo itakushake. Your knees magoti yatagongana usiwe na wasiwasi. Kama ye ndo amekuita, ye ndo atakaye support, ye ndo atakaye ifanye i come to pass, not you. Don't worry. Wewe ni bomba. Kama wewe ni bomba usiwe na wasiwasi, maji yatatoka wapi? Ungwa nini unapata wasiwasi usio wako? 
Bwana asiviwe. Tunaenda pamoja. Naona hata kuandika zamu andiki. Wezi kuandika. Hii inakwenda moja kwa moja moyoni na ishikilia huko uko isitoke. Manake utatoka tu hapo utakutana na wale washawishi wale. Watachukua hiyo wataivuruga kabisa watakuvuruga and you will lose your vision. Biblia inasema Yesu alitoa mfano. Akasema yule mpanzi alitoka akafanya nini? Akamsambaza mbegu. Na zile mbegu Yesu alisema ni nini? Ni neno. Mbegu za kwanza zikaangukia wapi? Barabarani. Zikaje zikaliwa na na ndege. Zile mbegu zikufika popote. Na akasema ile ardhi ni mioyo ya watu. Kwa hivyo unapokutana na neno, Mungu atakapokuchallenge with the word of God. If you do not take that word serious ukaliweka moyoni, utakapokanyaga tu pale nje. The first thing is ibilisi atakuja kuliiba lile neno. Your vision, everything which God is speaking to you now, the devil's activity will come and take it up. I want to promise you many many times people lose great things kwa sababu tunapokuwa kwenye uwepo wa Mungu namna hii Mungu anasema na roho zetu deep in the spirit Mungu anakuwa anasema na sisi alafu in your mind unaanza kufanya resolutions kwamba nitafanya hiki nitafanya hiki nitafanya hiki nitafanya hiki kwa sababu we are in the presence of God tukishatoka tu hapo nje Email zikianza na sim zikianza afu tukianza kukutana na watu utakuta lile neno linafanya nini shetani anali attack Mlijifunza nini huko leo alafu anakuambia wewezi wewe bwana si unijaribisha ukashindwa unaanza unaanza kuona sasa vitu vinaanza kuja negative things vinaanza kuja pale wewezi yani hapo wewe ulikuwa uko hype tu hapo kanisani wachungaji wa squeeze wana hype tu wanakufanya unakuwa hyper hyper tu wana ku hype hapo alafu kitoka hapo unakuwa uko excited ifike Jumatatu asubuhi when the reality hits in <laughs> my friend hiyo ni mbegu ile iliyoangukia wapi kuna video moja nilikuwa nafanya hapo nyumbani kwangu nilikuwa nafanya fanya everything nilisema everything which you see around started as an idea kila kitu unachokiona yani unachokiona otherwise hii dunia kungekuwa hakuna ideas kabisa tungekuwa kama vile tuko kwenye bustani ya Eden kungekuwa hakuna kitu na watu tunavaa majani tu basi ndio creativity ingeishia pale lakini Mungu alimpa Adam uwezo wa ku process ideas thoughts ziwe ideas alafu zile ideas zinaletwa zinakuwa plans zile plans zinaleta service ama zinaleta product ndio uumbaji ambao Mungu ametupa sisi kwa hivyo wewe Mungu anapokuweka idea ndani ya moyo wako ifuatilie it can be so weird mpaka unaweza ukashangaa wewe mwenyewe idea ambayo unaipata lakini kumbuka kila mtu Mungu anaongea naye tofauti na ana kitu ameweka ndani yako na kitakuja kama idea now you can either Catch that idea perpetuate it inerse ile idea ama unaweza kaiacha ikachukuliwa na ndege na hizo idea niwaambieni watu wa Mungu sisi watu wa Mungu ideas huwa zinatoka kwa Mungu mwenyewe ideas za watu wa Mungu huwa zinatoka kwa sababu the holy spirit speaks to you sasa unataka usikili sauti ndani ya moyo no Mungu anaongea na wewe ni very simple language that you can understand. And the easy way for you to understand is what? Ideas. Simple way. Sisi tunataka Mungu akisema na sisi basi mpaka dunia itetemeke aje mchungaji hapa atoe cheche kwenye moto mzo mdomoni ndio mjue sasa Mungu amesema sasa kutetemeke hapa kila mtu nywele zisisimke hivi ndio Mungu kasema Hapana, hapana. God speaks to us in the language that we can understand. Very simple. It can be just an idea. 
What idea comes over and over and over in your heart? Alafu na postpone. That is the idea. You need to run with it. Inakujia, inakimbia. Una una doubt. Inakujia hiyo dau hiyo idea, una unapata wasiwasi. Ukiongea na mtu anakukatisha tamaa. What is that one idea? Follow that idea. Piga tu moja imani kubwa kabisa sema okay, I know I'm going to fail. Let me try it anyhow. What about that? Wala well, sivyo. Tupo pamoja. Ama nama nimewaacha. Tupo hapa jamani. Tunaongelea to become a blessing. Tukasema kuna blessings zingine ni kweli unambariki mtu. Anabarikiwa, anafurahi. Tukasema kuna blessings zingine zina change a destiny. We call those the blessings of destiny. Yaani unambariki mtu unakuwa umebadilisha maisha yake completely. Hakuitaji tena. Sasa kufanyika hapa kuwa baraka na familia za dunia kubarikiwa kupitia wewe ni kwamba utakapobariki wengine hawatakuhitaji tena wewe. When your life gets into contact with them wanabadilika. Eh? Mungu anawagusa in the way kwamba they become na wenyewe wanakuwa baraka kwa wengine. Sio ile wewe unawabariki, ukishawabariki <laughs> kesho kuto wanakuhitaji tena wewe. No. Yaani Mungu atusaidie katika ku a blessing. Inakuwa tukibariki mtu, yule mtu anabarikiwa na yeye anafanyika kuwa baraka. Kwa hivyo hizi shilingi 200 200 zinafaa kupelekea watu zinasaidia. But why don't you take their their, their last bone? Alafu msomeshe mpaka chuo kikuu. Kwa nini usiseme I will adopt one of your kids? Naombeni bili yake yote from 6 mpaka chuo kikuu. Naombeni bili yake ni shilingi ngapi? Alafu mimi nitamsomesha. Msihangaike chochote na yule kijana. Nipeni mimi. Unakuwa umefanya nini? Umeleta destiny kwenye maisha. Lakini yeye huku mtoto huku yuko chuo ana shida unatuma dola mbili. Sasa jamani mbili si kesho takurudia tena. Na kesho kutu atarudi tena, atarudi tena, atarudi tena. We just bless them but we are not becoming a what? We are not changing destinies. Let us change our mindset. Tunaposaidia ndugu, tunaposaidia kwamba una design something ambacho kitaleta nini? It's a difference. Kitaleta a difference. Wale wa China wanasemaje? Usini? Usinipe samaki. Nifundishe? Mwingine alisema hivi, usinifundishe kuvua samaki, nifundishe kuchimba ile pond ya kufuga samaki. Ili siku yote nikitaka samaki naenda kuvua mimi mwenyewe. Si wa kwangu. Maana yake kesho kesho kutu au kishajifunza kuvua samaki utaenda pale utakuta kibao. Fishing is not allowed. <laughs> Unabaki na lile limko ngoja lako la kuvua samaki. Sasa hakuna mahali pa kuvua samaki. Hapa umeweka kibao, hapa turuhusu kuvua samaki. Huyu jamaa anakurudia tena na limkongojo lile. Bwana umenipa limkongojo ili la kuvua samaki lakini pa kuvulia samaki hamna. Mfundishe huyu jamaa kuchimba bwawa afuge samaki mwenyewe. Wale samaki hawa own ye. That's what we want. That is a revolutionized mindset. Timba bwawa la samaki. In every aspect you want to help ask yourself ninampa huyu mtu samaki ninampa huyu mtu mkongojo ule unaitwaje ile ndoano na nani inaitwaje ile ndoano na nini ile 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 inaitwaje ile ile lile lile mti lile ha mshipi ni kamba chambo ni yule bait yule lile lile mkongojo lile bwana lile la kufanya hivi lile 
hivi. A fishing rod inaitwaje Kiswahili sasa? Nyinyi mnajidai waswahili hapa? Oh, yale ya Kiswahili. Haya sasa. Hiyo ni mkongojo ule. <laughs> eh? <laughs> sasa ndio hivyo, unapotoa msaada, jiulize, ninatoa ninatoa samaki, ninatoa mkongojo ule ama ninawasaidia watu kuchimba mabwawa ya samaki? Bwana asifiwe sana. It's a challenge eh. Ndio hivyo tunakuwa a blessing watu hawatakuelewa wewe. Watakuwa wewe wanakuomba sio vibaya kupeleka hela ya dawa ya mswaki, sio vibaya. Lakini our mindset should be preparing these people to own their own fish ponds. And try to bring them to that level. Kwamba usiwaze tu kila siku tu Mungu anakuinua daraja ulikuwa unapokea samaki sana sasa hebu tuache kupokea samaki twende level tu tuanze kupokea ndoana na jinsi ya kuvua samaki lakini hatubaki hapo level 3 sasa tuanze kujifunza kuchimba mabwawa ya samaki wenyewe that is to become a what a blessing to the nations mmoja alisema unaweza kanipa dawa kanitibu leo lakini ukinifundisha afya utakuwa umenitibu forever to slow down eh tuchukue maswali sasa mcho gani si tumepiga piga hawa sana tutubishe sasa watubu sasa hawa watu hao <laughs> naomba ni sawa madorothy ona come if there's anything want to add come Kamani mehacha chochote. Bwana asifiwe. Naona tu kitu cha kuongezea ni hichi jamani. Mungu anatafuta watu watakaoleta solutions. Ah, wengi tunapenda kusaidia hasa nchi tulizotoka. Ah, Tanzania, Kenya, Uganda, Burundi kutoka. Lakini anatafuta watu ambao what a soft problems economically what about na wana mindset ya kupeleka viwanda what do you mind set ya kuanzisha vyuo what do you mind set ya kupeleka mashule ewa ni sisi mungu aje tukatia tena ndio bwana tuko hapa kwa sababu kuja kwetu marekani by itself it had a purpose and the purpose was bigger than just become that being blessed we are already blessed let me just encourage you in that area okay what na wambia wa marekani kiasi maskini wa wa marekani yani ni tajiri mkubwa duni ukilinganisha na nchi yoyote ile kwa sababu hapa atakula ataenda shelter atapewa nguo lakini mtu akiwa maskini kwa mfano nchi kutoka Tanzania ni maskini hana kitu kwa hiyo as long as tuko marekani tumepiga hatua kubwa sana na Mungu ana makusudi ya kila mmoja wetu lakini kuna kitu kikubwa ambacho pia nataka kuongelea kuhusu nations When we also talk about nations, it's a people group. Kila mtu wetu Mungu anamuita kwa ajili ya people group. A people group ni watu ambao wanaongea lugha fulani. Kwa mfano engineers. If you are an engineer, that particular people group is a nation. Kwa hiyo are you becoming a leader in that people group? If you maybe you are a woman and you have called katika hiyo people group what impact what influence are you bringing katika hiyo people group kwa hiyo sisi as people Mungu ametuita ku influence nations many people groups maybe hatutaenda katika nchi lakini kwa sababu the, the definition of nations is not only geographic mm. but it is of a people group. 
then he said, people grow to Mungu amekuitia to bring an impact, to influence, to bring an impression, to say kama Jacob alimosema, without nini hapa, we will sing balikiwa yuko. Kwa sababu, there is a favor of God, ambayo inaendana na mtu wa Mungu. Mm. Hata kama tumetoka kule maskini sana lakini huwa kuna ile favor fulani yani iliyo ambatana na Esther. Unajua Esther I love orphans. Tena atuo orphan na Mungu. Kwa mm. sababu there is a specific book in the Bible ambayo ni Esther na Esther alitoka kwa orphan all the way and became queen. And one of the reasons why she reached there because there was a favor of God upon her. Sasa huwa tunakonda na limitation in the mindset ya limitation na all those excuses abazo tumezi mention kwa ba I speak differently sina capital siwezi niko peke yangu ni ngumu lakini we forget there is favor when I feel it. Amen. To live on this chuo, it was the hardest thing. Kwa sababu tulikuwa as, uh, as pioneers, let me just say that. Katika zima bayo tulio konsisi. Kulikuwa kuna mtazania mwenye biyashara to start with. Na kitu chakwaza tulicho vika, tulipotoka abroxwana, kila mtu alituambia, Wanini mafatiria makala tas? Nataka kuenda pia na kwenye role models. Ya mani watu wanao india, the first thing you need to tell them is protect your staff and son. Sisi tulipofika hapa kitu cha kwaza tuliambiwa ya kwa nini mafatiria makala tas? Just go work. Unaone? Kwa hiyo, ni kwenye tu na role models. But it has to start somewhere. We should be the people, especially in the church, to bring in people who are coming in for the first time by the car. Kuna kijana mwoja ya kukudia for the first time. Na kitu cha kwanza tulimambia, usiati shuwe, usiati matamatasi. Tunamushukuru mungu alika, alika na sisi katika ile same for six months, akawa na ondoka. Na siku wali ondoka, alituambia kitu kimoja. Thank you kwa kuni encourage, kuniambia, nisiati status yangu, kuwa mbae na nisiate shuri. We need to be role models. Aijalishi kama nisisi tumepoteza status. Lakini we need to be role models. And then the other thing, mbacho anataka tu kuongezea, hapa ni kwama. Tusiogo. Ile fame, tusiogo. We have dreams kama umetiwa na una, una idea ya kufanya biashara usiogope jaribisha yes you might fail kama la dr sharu alikosema if you fail try again and again and again and again it is possible do not let your dreams go to waste i just want to encourage somebody three it was a like two three two years ago um, we had an idea of buying licenses and businesses which were going bankrupt. It was the most wide, we, we, we had a weird idea. And we didn't know how it's going to be. People were going out of business, they were filing bankrupts. But I just heard it, do it. And it was a lot of money. Say, why should we invest in all this money? It's like we're wasting money. I also want to encourage women because God usually gives you that godly instinct to do something. Don't be, don't be any psychiatry. Give a tell you. Now, I'm sure you can support me, invest in all that. Little did we know that it was the most income generating idea we have never seen. Kwa hiyo, ideas, kama Lucas kwa sima kukweli zinatoka kwa mwono, tuzipatilile. Tusikatisha ni tamaa inawezekana. 
there is favor of God. Even if you don't have money. There yeah. are a lot of great things God wants to do with us. But we have to be willing to take the first step. Amen. It's about taking that first step. What us feel. What I want to do you are going steps. I never fail to say it. Kwa sababu hakuna kitu kitakachofanyika kama hatutachukua hatua ya kwanza. Just take that first step. Mungu amen. Amen. Kabla sija open up the floor for little discussion there. Kuna huyu mtu kwenye Biblia ambaye naye ana kitabu kizima kizima amepewa Nehemaya anaeletewa habari kwamba malango ya Yerusalemu yame na kukuta umebomolewa and we see Nehemaya anakwenda anaongea anaomba alafu anakwenda anaongea na mfalme na mfalme anampa resources za kwenda kwenda ku repair ukuta pamoja na malango ya Yerusalemu ukiangalia Nehemiah's mindset ni mindset ambayo ina think very big na inachukua position ambayo yupo na na seize opportunity based on the position ambayo yupo yeye alikuwa ni cup bearer kwamba yuko hapo white house yeye ndio anamnyoesha mfalme mvinyo ama anamadvise mfalme my challenge to you ni how do you use your position to influence your vision how do you use your position hapo hapo ulipo kabla hujaenda mahali popote how do you use that position to influence vision ambayo ama passion ambayo unayo manake mara nyingi watu watu na sema ah mpaka nitoke kwanza hapa siwezi nikafanya kwa sababu niko hapa sasa hivi inabidi nitoke kwanza hapa ndio ni kafanye lakini hapo hapo kwanza kabla hujatoka what are you doing kama ufanyi kitu chochote wala you're not even concerned even you're not even asking manake nehemiah asked and he was constantly asking about the welfare of the people back there So I want you to challenge. Hapo hapo ulipo kuna vitu Mungu anaweza kuanza kukuandaa kabla hujaondoka. Mimi nilikuwa bado niko nafundisha chuo. Mungu akaanza kunipa ideas. Thank you. <laughs> Mpigie mwambie tuko online. <laughs> mwambie tuna stream. <laughs> Mungu akaanza kunipa niko idea, niko nafundisha darasani nimeajiriwa tu na mpu Mungu akawa ananipa ideas tukaanza kuzifanyia kazi hizo ideas kidogo kidogo na hata tulipokuja kuja kuanzisha chuo kikuu zile ideas ambazo nilikuwa mimi naendelea nazo tangu niko nafundisha nikaanza kujifunza ku video tape nikaanza kujifunza kuandika software na kuweka online na online business it was so easy for us kuja mpaka kuja ku launch chuo na mpaka kuja ku launch chuo kikubwa manake nilishafanya consultation nyingi sana za kusaidia viuo vingine kuanza na kuweka masomo yao online ku mirror everything which they have to write kila kitu kutengeneza ile online platform nzima nzima nilikuwa naweza kuiandika from the scratch mwenyewe kwa hivyo you can ask yourself hapo hapo ulipo kitu gani ambacho unakifanya ambacho utakitumia as a leverage ili mkwenda kufanya ile vision ambayo Mungu anakupa sio kama ndio unaenda kuanza from the scratch Nehemiah used his position akapata all the resources he needed kwenda kujenga ukuta back at home 
sasa sisi tunataka twende huko home ndio tukamobilize resources huko nyumbani kule nyumbani anakuambia wewe si huko huko kwa nini usiende huko Marekani unakuja huko Marekani unakuwa macho yako Tanzania ukienda Tanzania unakuta macho yako when we are here how are we using our influence kuweza kufanya hata portion ya kufuatilia ile dream ambayo Mungu ameiweka moyoni mwako hatuna muda wa kuongea kuhusu jinsi gani ya kutransition i think i, I had a video on that jinsi gani ya kutransition kutoka hapo ulipo pole 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 mpaka ile dream yako ndio inakuwa life yako yani unatoka huku ambako sasa hivi huko unaanza kupiga hatua moja moja pole pole mpaka ile dream sasa inapoweza kukusupport we mwenyewe there is a systematic way of doing that how kurupuki tu wengi ukisikiliza wengi wanapofundisha wanakuambia just follow your dream toka tu huko rukia huko utalala njaa <laughs> eh utafanya nini utalala njaa utakosa chakulisha watoto just do it very systematic do not give up on your dream start kama kusema Dorothy start small naomba tufungue flow halafu tu pokee maswali najua tumewalaza hapa tumeongea mpaka mmelala vipi kidogo daftari haijajaa bado hata nusu haijafika <laughs> maswali let let's let's relax and if we have any we have talked two things tumeongelea three tumeshaongelea three things tumeongelea kimoja tu tunamaliza tumeongelea kuhusu wealth what is wealth tumeongelea changamoto ambazo tunakutana nazo tumeongelea kuhusu destination eh? where do we really want to go ile tuka define wealth in all those categories na hapo ndipo that is our destination kwa chochote ambacho tunakifanya tunataka tufikie hapo kwamba tubarikiwe sisi eh tunabarikiwa sisi na sisi tunafanyika kuwa baraka eh this is so lovely i love it kwamba Mungu anatubariki sisi na sisi tuna wabariki wengine in every aspect kwa mapana yake haijalishi haijalishi hapo tunaweza tukaongelea talents tunaweza tukaongelea professions so long as you are touching lives out there this is bigger than you ukiwa hapa it is bigger than you kinacho ku drive ni the need out there na sio small little food for every day 